Hello, my name is Dredd. This is Miss Valley Entertainment News. Would I like to cover the tears of people who love Starfield? Oh, would I ever. Okay, so this is a uh, video I'm reacting to by uh, Yang Ye. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that, and uh, I will link that down below in the description. We're going to jump into it a little bit in. He's uh, doing some positive stuff about, you know, Starfield, but hey, you want to look at yourself, you go ahead. Uh, I'm more interested in the uh, the interesting parts of this, which are Starfield adds pricey paid mods, gets flooded with negative reviews, and mass downvoted. So we're going to jump into the 252 port uh, point right here, and let's jump in and see what Yonge has to say about the recent Starfield updates, including Creation Club mods. Um, given the disappointing nature of the base games campaign which felt just very repetitive in its tasks and uh whose characters just didn't quite resonate with me i hope that shattered space will really be able to deliver uh, a more just i don't know uh, a campaign that hooks me more to the experience Good now luck. one of the things that this trailer also introduced was user created content and mods that are being sold Oh, shocking. As well as Bethesda created mods that are being sold. New custom content from Bethesda Game Studios and community creators. They're being sold. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Some of which is free, some of which you have to pay for. We've been down this road before with Skyrim and Fallout, and both times it wasn't particularly well received, it didn't go down particularly well. Bethesda insisting on going. That's kind of an understatement. That's kind of an understatement. Down this path again, just won't do optics of this game any better. In no, fact, if not. you go to Starfield Steam page right now, you'll find that there's been a flood of negative reviews. Bethesda can't help but shoot themselves in the foot, though. I wish they would shoot themselves in the face instead and off themselves because, um, you know, and their company. I, I don't mean literally the people within offing themselves, but off the company. It's about time. It's about time that the people turned it up on Bethesda to, you know, demand that this whole studio just get folded. Really. Because this... This crap is the future of Bethesda. It's the only thing they seem to know how to do is piss off people. The game's currently sitting at a recent review score of only 35% from almost 2,000 user reviews, and the overall review score is still sitting at a mixed score of 60% from hmm. almost 100,000 user reviews. And scrolling down, you can see the graph here that shows the kind of even spread of positive and negative reviews, and then the paid mod stuff starts to release, and suddenly you can see that negative reviews have started to become more prominent than positive reviews. And top because people get excited. Oh, mods! Mods are here! Mods are here! And like a week later or less, they're like, "Oh my god, these are all shit! Why did I just purchase all those mods? What an idiot I am!" And I'm gonna be like, "Why do you own Starfield in the first place?" And for those of you who bought Starfield, maybe bought it in advance, played it for a while and thought, why did I do this? At least I understand you got caught up in the hype. Don't get caught up in the hype anymore. There is no hype. It's all fake. But yeah, people got really excited. They've all been excited about mods coming to fix this game. And then they realized most of the mods are being sold and most of the mods are shit. They're skins. They're just a bunch of skins. Top reviews you'll see here with people finding these kinds of reviews helpful kind of highlight how it feels unacceptable that they're pursuing paid mods again, especially when the initial batch of stuff not only is overpriced, but the content itself just doesn't feel substantial enough okay. for the price that they're asking for. So I'm reviews shocked. read along the lines of really another push for curated paid mods no one asked for. Are you this desperate for modders to fix your game on a budget instead of doing it yourself with developers on an actual payroll? 
this disconnected from the actual foundations of your success your titles have had this far. There's a simple reason why many players and modders enjoy modding their games for decades. Uh, it is done as a hobby for players by players without corporate responsibilities and apart from donation opportunities without asking for or expecting monetary compensation. These paid mods are essentially just... Now he just leaves the rest of that review and doesn't read it. Let's read the rest of it. You are not aiding modding in the slightest. You are trying to turn modding into a business opportunity. To be a parasite that profits from underpaid work you do not want to do yourselves. This is another pathetic attempt to generate, read Leech, revenue from work that is not your own by implementing yourself as its monopoly distributor. If this somehow finds acceptance, gamers lose. If this somehow finds acceptance, unlicensed mods will eventually get restricted or prohibited in the years to come, because those do not generate perpetual revenue after all. All the awards this got, by the way. Uh, I can read right over here. Someone from June 15th says, I had high hopes for this game, but unfortunately, it seems unlikely it will receive the major overhaul it desperately needs. No shit, buddy. No shit. While the new map and the ability to customize the interiors of ships are positive steps forward, there's still a lot more that needs to be addressed. Hello, it's been out almost a year. There's still a lot more that needs to be addressed, and see the preceding sentence? Seems unlikely it will ever receive the major overhaul it desperately needs. Put these together, you've got an unfinished game that'll never be finished. Uh, it's clear why the developers are now looking to the modding community to fix the game's issues. Perhaps if they offer a fair share of revenue, the modder modders can achieve what the studio could not. It's not could not, it's will not. Refuse to. Don't give a fuck. Don't care about you unless you're handing them money. They don't fucking care. They won't get a dime out of me until they do better than garbage tracker mission they put out, which you got to pay for all your missions. Yes. As someone here says on June 15th, will they recommend it? Nope, not in its current state. Well, good luck because its state will never actually change. Compensation. These paid mods are essentially just bite-sized DLC a la, you know, Horse Armor back in the Oblivion days that kickstarted the horse microtransactions armor. elements he and said horse uh, armor. inclusions and in games. Right here we have Starfield's creation hub, and you can see right here that some of this stuff is free to download, but then stuff like this costs 700 premium currency, 1,000 premium currency, and 300 premium currency, respectively, or about 7 10 and $3, respectively. On, Howard, and shoes. looking at what they give you, it they're hardly worth that kind of money. So, for example, Tracker's Alliance, the Vulture, is just a single quest, a single bounty you have to track down to kill. Once you kill this guy, you do get his gear. But for $7, that's that just feels like measly content. You'd be hard-pressed to not find mods that are far more substantial than this and are absolutely free to download. Next up, we got this Ancient Mariner module, which is $10. It's essentially a hub that you can attach to your ship, and it's got its own style of a sort of cosmetic decoration. $10 for this is kind of absurd. And last but not least, we got Constellation plushie set, which is $3, and it gives you some plushies. Uh, craft five adorable plushies of your favorite members to proudly display in your outpost homes and ships. It doesn't do much of anything. It's just a cosmetic your element. It uh, doesn't have any sort of interactivity, from what I understand. Because just kind of there. Just These are just the overpriced microtransactions disguised as mods and custom content. I uh, like to pass, but that oh. Uh, let's go see what he said there again. Sorry about microtransactions. I missed this part. Uh, craft five adorable plushies of your favorite members to proudly display in your outpost homes and ships. It doesn't do much of anything. It's just a cosmetic mm -hmm. element. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of interactivity from what I understand. They're just kind of there. These are yeah. just overpriced microtransactions disguised as mods and custom. Overpriced transactions disguised as mods Shit. 
shit that the developers could have put into their game if they had an extra hour to do it. That, that's what it is. That's that's what it is. And you have to listen to the actual modders, the actual professional modders who have already told you a long time ago they abandoned this game and didn't mod it because the game cannot be fixed by modders. The issues with the game are too large. You have to go and strip this thing right down to nothing and start all over again. And modders cannot do that. You're not going to fix Starfield. Starfield was broken from the moment it was conceived, basically. Let alone launched. Content. Uh, like the business model is no different from microtransactions. And if this stuff were, you know, a couple cents or whatever, maybe it'd be acceptable if it were like a dollar or something. But $7, $10, and $3, not only is this stuff not in the spirit of what people associate when it comes to modding for Bethesda games, it's also just insultingly priced in a way that's not going to win people over. Paid mods is just not something that people are going to gravitate towards. If the business model looks like this, and if this is the kind of price point that we can expect for future content, like you yeah. could choose to spend 20 bucks okay. on either all three of these uh, paid mods that total $20, or you could take that money and spend it on a really good, game. extensive, and fully fleshed out indie game. How something like Vampire Survivors costs $5, it's just $2 more than this plushy set that does absolutely nothing and it's cheaper than this one single quest that gives you some new equipment uh this content that feels completely insubstantial for its asking price like if you're going to pursue this kind of business model at the very least make the price points palatable enough or maybe people will be open to this but with these kinds of price points, people are immediately going to be like, nope, we're not giving this a chance at all. That was the case years back when stuff like this was introduced for Skyrim and Fallout, and it seemed as though Starfield is only going to sort of continue this tradition instead of uh, trying to improve the business model. But generally, modding is seen as a place where people can approach new content and just uh, creating new stuff for the game from a place of passion. But yeah, that's kind of what's going on with which is where you get the modders who just work for their own pleasure and do things because they love the game, not because they're interested in making a buck through Bethesda. So this means the mods you're looking for are the mods that are not going to be on the Creation Club. Let's be honest, they're not. And again, you listen to the modders who are not on Creation Club the ones who actually would love to mod a game like this, love to mod Bethesda games, and they will tell you, we can't fix this game. We're not going to mod it. We can't fix it. We can't do it. It is broken at its core. Its core features are designed so poorly that they can't fix them. Starfield, why it's being flooded with negative reviews all of a sudden. If Starfield intends to kind of make a comeback like, say, Cyberpunk 2077 did, they got to dispense with stuff like this and focus on more positive stuff like the recent update that added all these new improvements and quality of life changes. And hopefully Shattered Space will be substantial enough of an addition in terms of a great campaign and story as well as overhauling aspects of the game that need to be overhauled that uh i predict shattered space when it, whenever it comes out will probably take uh bring some of the people who've left starfield back to play it some of them not all of them but some of them will come back to play it they'll get a spike in numbers in that sense but i i really doubt it's going to cause many new people to purchase the game And it's going to be short-lived. People are going to play the play the DLC, and they're going to be like, you know, that was fine, or whatever they feel about it. It was decent. It was better than the real, the, just the game itself. It drew me back. It was fine. It was fun for, you know, five, ten hours, whatever they end up spending on it. Twenty hours, you know. You know, you got to play like 3,000 hours before you even get to the good parts of the game, I know. But um, but they're, they're, they're going to go their way again, and they're going to go off and play the next thing, because... Starfield is not going to keep the attention of many people. 
it's not. Uh, you'll look at their Steam numbers. They're low. They're low. Um, and there's some people who will just continually play it because they're just star big Starfield boosters, and that's fine. Every every game has its boosters. Um, what can I say about those people? They're they're loyal to their game. Um, but I don't think your DLC is going to drive people back, keep them back, and I don't think it's going to drive new people to the game. I don't think that's happening. Starfield can eventually one day be uh, seen as a game that uh, did listen to its audience and uh, did come back. They're actually planning to add vehicles as well uh, in future updates. They've already announced that. But again, there are certain core issues with They're Starfield with. that I don't know if an expansion will be enough to fix. Uh, you. It feels like just the foundation of the game was designed in such a way where uh, it diminishes that Bethesda-style sense of exploration that we all fell in love with but i don't know we'll see maybe the the dlc and expansion will surprise us but as far as the paid mod stuff goes it is not going down well but this is the latest on starfield ladies so that was uh, the video by young Ye. again you can drop down below and watch the whole thing for yourself uh go read your go read the reviews on steam if you choose to you want a good laugh or a good cry depending how you feel about starfield but um we keep covering this because Starfield was big news. It was big news years before it came out. It was massively hyped. And no matter what some people will tell you, it was a massive failure. Um, did not live up to the hype. Did not live up to Bethesda standards, which are not that high to begin with anymore. Um, did not even live up to Bethesda standards. Uh, they then attacked their fans. And, um, you know, they really haven't listened to the fans so far. I mean, they still haven't fixed most of the stuff that should have been fixed for this game ever launched. So, um, Starfield. It is what it is, and history will show it was uh, not great. Not great. So, for Miss Valley Entertainment News, my name is Dredd. Keeping up to date with Starfield and Bethesda and all the other good stuff out there. Catch y'all later. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.